Good evening, everyone in Asia, and good morning, everyone here in U.S. Um, we are here again. Um, this is num uh, webinar number 11. Um, and today, I don't know, I can say it's a privilege, but I got my own son to talk about uh, his pathway today and all about AJGA. Uh, if you can see, we, we look alike, right? So, uh, you know. Um, before we get started, I just want to um, let you know that um, our AJJ in Thailand, the tournament, um, it's already full, right? Anyone who want to join uh, for AJGA in Thailand on May 3rd and May 5th, you are now have to play qualify, right? Just go ahead and register the qualify. It's going to be only 18 hole qualify, one round, uh, but you got to get a good chance because we have 12 spot for boys and six spot for girls, okay? So there's plenty, plenty of opportunities um, for you to, to play AJJ in Thailand. And if you look, there's so many um, exemptions that um, we are given to the winner of the AJJ in Thailand, um, especially for boys, you got 10 more exemption to get into the tournaments, you know, such as um, the number five, you know, the uh, number five amateur uh, tournament in the world, South Beach, you know, you get exemption to play for that. You have North and South boy, you have North and South women amateurs, you know? So a lot of this um, amateur and junior tournament that you will also gain exemption if you win the AJJ Thailand, right? Both boys and girls. Um, with that, um, today, you know, seeing he's uh, my own son, I'm not going to conducting um, the interview today. Um, I'm going to ask uh, our senior director, uh, Miss Jum, to uh, handle and, and take over to talk with Josh today. But uh, before we get to that, just want to introduce you all our team in Thailand. Why don't we start with uh, his own um, aunt, my own sister, uh, Pijiap. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, this is uh, Pichi Up the house, and uh, you can call also also me. Uh, also call me Money. I'm glad you know that uh, we come to this uh uh situation that we can you know um arrange the AJGA first AJGA tournament in Thailand, and uh, we're here to work or to walk together with our parents to uh make the. Uh, um, you know, all your child's dream come true about education and sport or and skill development in university. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And also we have um Kun Wanalak. Boom cap. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Okay, my name is Manalak, and uh, I'm the senior director of the consulting in uh, AR. Um, uh, and uh, congratulations. I mean, I have to say um, hello to everybody here to join our eleventh uh, webinar, and especially this this one is our own. I mean, uh, our boss, son, uh, Jose. And uh, nice to meet you, Jose. Anyway, um. I work with uh, AR as the consultant, as senior consultant, and uh, I work for preparation the kid when uh, to about the NCAA ID, about the document, and uh, what uh, the clip video and uh, arrange the uh, interview with the coaches. Okay, so um, it's very proud of uh, me to working with the AR, and uh, I know this is the right way for the kids to uh, pursue his uh, education and the chance to play in the big event in the state, especially golf sport. Okay, thank you and nice to meet you all. Well, thank you, Kun Boom. And uh, she has been instrumental helping um, all of our clients um, throughout the process. Well, thank you again. Um, with that, I will turn over to uh, Ms. Jum and um, she will be uh, conducting the webinar with Josh. Good luck, Josh. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. So 
um, my name is Jim. Just want to introduce myself again, and also George that haven't know my name yet. Jose. So my name is Jim, and I'm a parents that of my uh, and that a bit before, and yeah, he is a uh, request for the you know soccer scholarships to go to the U.S. four years ago. So right now I'm becoming to be the a senior consulting director, global director that we helping, you know, for a parents that uh, to understand the process, how you were getting the pathway to go to the college in the U.S. So nice to meet you by officially, Josie. Okay. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> okay. So first of all, I would like yourselves again like uh what is your name or what is uh you know class you are and mm -hmm. what is you know like about your um story uh my name's josh duomini um i'm a freshman at uva and i will graduate uva um in the spring of 2027 and i mean how I started playing golf was pretty simple. I, I kind of just followed my brother's footsteps. Um, we would just go together to the golf course every day. Um, and, you know, just hit balls together. And um, it just started to be like a repetitive process and just kept grinding. And that's where I am today, um, playing college golf at probably the highest amateur level possible. Right. And how do you feel about that, that you have sibling, your brother is having play the same sport and could, could you share anything together, you know, as you know, like, uh, I having daughter and son, so they are diff different, you know, so when you having a sibling, that brother is having playing sport thing that you play together. So how could you feel and how do you sharing, you know, together? Yeah, I think uh, having a brother is pretty good, um, especially that he can keep me in check. Um, he can help like push my game uh, to the next level because he's three, he's three years older than me and yeah. his game is probably more mature than mine at the moment. So then if I keep learning from him and we just keep playing together. I think I'll eventually get to his level or even excel his level in the future. And and that's good that you also is the same college, right? And the same major that you yeah. choose to study. So that means you're having a good advisor, you know, for your brother, and then you are follow his step, and then both of you is having done well too. So I'm quite glad for your parents for this one. So they don't have you. You don't have to fighting, you know, or separate to do a different sport, you know, that because you mm -hmm. can go enjoying the same activity, and you yeah. are done well. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, as we talking today about AJGA Thailand, but I would like you to share about AJGA in the U.S. When did mm -hmm. you start to, you know, join the first AJGA tournaments in mm -hmm. in the U.S.? Yeah, um, I think my first AJGA was a qualifier uh, when I was 12 years old. So that's about seven years ago. Um, mm -hmm. I remember I had to qualify because I didn't have enough stars to get into the real event. And uh, thankfully, I qualified. But... I think it's just a great learning experience um, of what the AJGA has taught me, which was like, you have to be determined and committed to getting better and playing tournaments in order to get recruited by colleges. Okay. And how is, you know, you getting recruits to get in the AJGA? Mm -hmm. How hard, how hard that you will get into AJGA? Uh, it took me 
I'd say a year or two to actually um, gain enough stars to play in the real events. Because I remember growing up, um, I was chasing stars with my parents. We would drive eight hours, 10 hours sometimes to different states, maybe fly out to like California just to get two to four to eight stars, which was pretty big at the time. Because if you if you weren't fully exempt um, from like finishing top five in like a bigger event, then you would have to do that process. So it's also, I mean, it's costing a lot of time, a lot of money, mm -hmm. yeah. right? That to, to doing this for, you know, your process to getting mm -hmm. the recruiting, right? So yeah. you think this is, is a good opportunity for the Asian players that, you know, to, to getting these tournaments mm -hmm. in Thailand? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great opportunity um, that the AR, the agency college recruit, is hosting an AJGA in Asia because it would, it's more, um, how do I put it? It's more convenient. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't have to spend as much time, as much money as like flying to the US trying to gain stars. It's already there for you in Thailand, which is, which is great. Yeah. And also about, do you uh, uh, can explain about PBE star? Because some of, uh, you know, people still confusing, you know, maybe it might be the first tournament for them, you know, for AJGA mm -hmm. in Asia, I mean, in Southeast Asia. So mm -hmm. they, they might not recognize why that uh, PBE star is very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think PBE stars are important because they help you get into tournaments. So um, some of the AJGAs here, you need at least 10 stars in order to play in the tournament. So if you can keep on gaining stars through qualifiers and the actual tournament, if you play well, then it will be a lot easier for you to play some tournaments here in the U.S. Okay. So how you know, for preparing of your practice, you know, and also how did you uh, manage of your mentality, you know, that uh, before the tournaments, because some, you know, nervous or it might be exalted or, you know, then how could you deal with that before you get in the tournaments? Um, are you talking about practice? Like my yeah, practice, practice before yeah, heading out practice, to tournaments? Yeah, yeah. First, first we start with the practice. How do you prepare and uh, to getting to the tournaments? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, a week before, I would tend to look at Google Earth um, to look at the layout of the course and mm -hmm. kind of plot my way through um, the course, which would be like, if... If I off the tee, if um, I I need to know how far or how like how wide the fairway is, so I would just go on Google Earth and then use the measure tool, and it would say like thirty to forty yards, which would which would be perfect for me because I know I want to hit to the, the biggest area of the fairway, and it would it'll just be an easy approach up. So that would I would do that a week before um, the actual tournament, and then. Leading up to the tournament, I would, I mean, I would just get out of the range because that, that mindset of um, like working on the swing, I, I, I can't do that. So I would, I would play holes because I, I need that mindset of I need to score and not work on my swing and think about something. So I would, I would just play more holes leading up to the tournament and getting to like two, three days before the tournament, I would um just emphasize short game i think putting is underlooked sometimes especially speed wise so i mean in order to score you kind of need to putt well um so I, I just try to dial in those um the speed of the greens and just hopefully uh play well good because this is i think it's well good for 
you know, the example for some kid that uh, maybe the coach is my planning for them or maybe they do it by yourself. So for you, did you do that yourself to certain Google or, you know, your dad or your coach is telling you to do this? Because, you know, as the Asian kid, sometimes we, we need the guideline and the coach is telling to do, but I don't know about you did you do that yourselves or you know yeah i mean early early on in my tournament career uh my dad and my mom would walk through it with me um like google earth they would walk through it with me and kind of map out the course with me but over time i started to dismiss that a little bit and um do my my own thing which is still google earth um but I think it's a it's a good lot. It was a good guideline um, that my parents walked me through, which I still use today. Um, and the coaches, the coaches here at UVA, they still do it too. Okay, so you have a good backup, good supporter, yeah. right? Yes. Okay, okay. So, uh, for AJDA that. After that, you've been going to the tournaments that, and you know, and then how did you like, you know, when you sometimes is the the we the weather it might be not you know, so how did you uh can figure it out that and you know fixing that the problem right in front of you how how did you do that dealing with that. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of hard to say um, because you can't really control the weather, but you can control what you're gonna do about it. So, say mm -hmm. it's it's gonna rain before a tournament, you should bring a rain jacket, you should bring like an umbrella, and you should bring rain gloves. That's something you can control, but you can't really control the weather. So, I think sticking with that mindset of what you can do and not um, complaining about something i think that'll just take you a long way um through golf or through in life okay so how is uh the different of the new part wait 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 i just missing out that how is the different from the a a j g at the part way that uh I, I I'm missing that a bit, Josh. Could you could you bring it up that again? Right. Well, I'll I'll find out that. So uh, then uh another. You know the AJGA that in in the US that they having you know a different state right. So, what is um you know for the Asians uh player should think about should find the right one the right right uh locations mm -hmm. that is suitable for them or because sometimes when they are register you know so they don't know that uh what is the right fit for them so did you having any suggest about that uh maybe i mean um in the in the u.s there's different types of grass uh you have in the north uh bent grass in the south bermuda grass sometimes zoysia grass so i think just picking the type of grass you like uh mm -hmm. goes a long way because especially on Bermuda grass. Um, it's just very grainy around the greens and actually on the greens. So you kind of have to think a little bit and play the break of the grass compared to bent grass where you don't have to really think about it. You just kind of hit the pot. Um, but maybe find something that's similar to the grass um, in Thailand or at your home course. Okay. That certainly helps. Thank you for good advice for that. And what is different of the tournaments in AJGA between like All-Star and 
open tournament and invitation. So yeah. first we How have all. Different? So first we have all stars. Uh, I think it's twelve to fifteen years old. Um, that's just kind of introducing AJGA and kind of their game plan um, of what they want you to follow. Mm -hmm. So you start out with the junior all-star 12, 15, and then the opens people tend to play from 15 to 18 years old, which is kind of like high school, um, high school players. But then you have the invitationals, which um, everyone wants to play because that's where like most of the elite fields are. Um, so, but the only way you can like go through that process is by gaining stars um, and then hopefully playing well in a couple of AJJ opens, which mm -hmm. can propel your ranking up to the top and play against um, some of the top people in the, or top some of the top juniors in the world. Okay. And Josh, can you explain for someone who are new in AJGA pathway, what's mm -hmm. different of the tournament in AJGA or well, I already said that, sorry. So yeah, so it's um for the new for the new part a uh, pathway who are having joined this. So you think they are should really, really join this tournament, right? I mean, I think AJ, AJJ has dominated um, pretty much every, like they've dominated the junior um, circuit in the U.S. If people who think they want to play in college golf must play AJGA um, mm -hmm. because AJGA, they attract they attract everyone. They attract um, new golfers. They attract college coaches and um I mean, it's just important if you want to play college golf, you have to play the AJGAs. Yeah, that's why uh, Tiger Woods is also playing, right, for mm, AJGA. Yeah. Okay, so what what was your favorite tournament in AJGA? Uh, my favorite tournament had to be one of the last invitationals I played, which is the junior players. Um, they kind of, they treated everyone well um almost like the actual players we we had we got to play tpc sawgrass which was amazing and um the conditions were very similar to uh sawgrass that the pros play right now so it had to be junior players for sure okay and how hard how hard is to play invitations um I think it was pretty difficult. I didn't play the invitations until my last year, which was senior year of high school. So mm -hmm. I had to work my way up through the junior all-stars, play well in those, and then play well in the the AJJ Opens to have a shot at playing the invitationals. Because if you want to play the invitationals, you would have you have to have a certain ranking. You have to be I think is around top 70 top 70 in the rolex rankings would get um, you into AJJ invitationals so if you just play well in the AJJ opens finish top 10 um consistently then you'll find yourself playing in some AJJ invitationals which are pretty sweet so and you done you done well right i try <laughs> <laughs> okay and how hard what is to be uh, exempt, you know, how long is take, you know, is take it to you? Ooh, um, I mean, it's, it's pretty hard playing or it's pretty hard getting fully exempt. Um, you have to finish top five in any AJGA open, which yeah. is actually a lot of pressure. If you're someone like me, that was, trying to get fully exempt, but had to say, fly to California or fly to Florida. Um, so it took a, it took a toll, but I finally got it after eight events. Um, and then I just kept piling it up, which, which is pretty good. Good, good. 
Okay. So I think that we're having, you know, learned more about AJGA from you and your brother last week too. So right now I will giving to participants, you know, audience that who might having a question directly to you. So anyone who would like to ask him to Josie, so you can ask him. Yes. You have to turn on the the, the microphone, car. Yeah. George, what is your plan after you finish the school? Uh, I mean, after I finish UVA, I will definitely give um, Pro Golf a shot. Because I, I spent 15 to 16, 17 years of playing golf. And I would just love to give it a shot. Um, I know it's hard out there. Um, but I just want to give myself the opportunity to at least try. Um, if I if I go down, um, if I don't make it, then at least I know I gave it my best shot. Well, oh, question right here. Yeah, uh, Kunpentev is asking, why do you choose to study economics? Is it difficult to be a good of both academic and golf? Uh, so the first question, I why I chose to study economics, um, it was pretty simple. I, I knew I wanted to be an econ major too because my dad, um, my dad worked in finance for, for a while growing up, and it's just something I was passionate about. Um, if golf doesn't work out, then what can I do, um, in my life to kind of be happy. So I picked economics. Um, and then is it difficult to be good or good, both academic and golf? Um, I think it's just a balance. If you can find the right balance of going to classes in the morning and practicing in the afternoon after classes and just be, just have good time management. I think, I think it's very, um, doable. Yeah, Sam up Phil asking, what does your daily routine look like? Oh, um, it changed a little bit in college. Um, so I'll give, I'll, I'll give like Monday for an example. On Mondays, we have workouts from 6.30 to 7.30 in the morning. So I would get up at six o'clock, um, head over to the gym, um, with the team we'll work out until 7 30 and then I have classes from 9 to 10 um, 10 to 11 and then 11 to 12 so that takes up most of my kind of morning um, and then I grab lunch and then head to the head to the golf course by one o'clock um, and then we have scheduled practice from two to five and then just head to dinner and then try to cram in any homework I can before going to bed and then doing that process again um, daily. It's have to be a very disciplined, yeah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the next question, like, you, you know, you had success uh, this summer at the US and major. What was your process from beginning to end to get to the final stage of the USAM, yeah. Um, are you, are you talking about qualifying or like at the actual event? Yeah, actual qualifying. Qualifying. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean there there were no uh there were no tournaments that or like there were no qualifiers around my area that I could cram in. So I had to fly all the way to, uh, to Missouri to play in the oh. U S qualifier. So, I mean, that was a lot of pressure, but I really, I really didn't mind it. But, um, I remember that first round I came off the course shooting two under, and then I knew I had a shot, but I, I knew I had to also go deep in order to like, in order to make it. Um, so I remember 
remember waking up. Um, I told my mom I felt really good that day. Um, and then we drove to the course for the second round. And I mean, I was, I think it was five to six under through nine. And I mean, if, if you're five or six under through nine, you're just thinking on that back nine, I just need to hold that score. And I mean, that's what I did. I shot bogey free seven under that day and won the qualifying and then booked my ticket to um, Oregon or not Oregon, sorry, to Colorado uh, to play my first U.S. Amateur. So that is not easy, right? To get no. in qualify too. No, not at all. So how many try that did it take? I think uh, it took four attempts, uh, mm -hmm. which was four years um, of trying to trying to play in the U.S. Amateur to finally make it. And then, I mean, I knew. I knew um, when I was at the USAM, I knew how important it was to me because you're only going to get this many uh, opportunities like once in a while. So I had to take my opportunity. Um, I remember that that first round, I uh, I came off I came off the course after tripling the last hole, being so mad. Um, I was I shot three over that day and. I kind of looked at the leaderboard because U.S. Amateur, they play two courses. So I had to look at the leaderboard to see what I was at and what everyone shot on the other course. And I just knew I needed to go low. So I think that the lowest round on that other course that first day was two or three under. Um, and then I was like, okay, I really have to go low. And... Uh, that's what I did. I shot bogey free four under um, that second round. And then I think I finished around 30th and made match play. So I think um, sometimes you just have to, you just have to dig a little deep. Okay. So anyone else have a question? Did you gain distance on your own or did college help you? Uh, mainly for myself. I remember during COVID, I, um, I would work out um, 6 to 7.30 every morning. And because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I need, I wanted to gain distance. I think that's, that's the most important part of this game. Um, if you have enough distance, you can have irons in the par fives. You can have wedges in the par fours. You can have short irons in the par threes. So I knew I needed to gain distance off the tee. And that's something I did myself um, as a junior. So I think it's important to just try to try to gain that club head speed real quick. And how far do you hit the driver? Uh, on the course, I swing at one, a cruising 121 um, miles per hour, which around like 315 carry. So that is the best? But... That's uh, that's one of the farthest on the team. I'm, I'm one of the farther hitters on the team, George and I. Oh. So, I mean, it kind of shows in our scores that in order – to play at a high enough level, you need to have distance. So, do you like playing with your brother? I, uh, I, I, I think it's fun for the most part. There's sometimes where it's like if we're qualifying together, then we might take each other's spot sometimes. But I think it's good that we keep each other in check and just be as competitive um, with one another. Okay, so Phil asking a question, how do I prepare myself for college for next year? Oh, that's a hard one. You can suggest because you are to this year you're a freshman, so you're mm -hmm. gonna be a freshman next year. So yeah, could you give some suggests for him? Uh the only suggestion I could really give would be 
Um, obviously, to have good time management, uh, I think that's important. And um, probably trying to figure out what classes to take. I feel like uh, asking uh, current teammates, like current people on the team, um, like what classes to take, it, I think um, it would really help because it helped me a lot. Um, kind of like that transition period from high school to summer to first semester at college, you kind of need to ease your way into college instead of trying to take hard classes straight out the bat. Mm -hmm. So, Bill, you got that, right? So you can ask him more when you are in the U.S., Okay, and what do you think, what is the important thing that UVA coach looking for from the student athlete and choose to be the team? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I was actually talking to him about this two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. Um, they don't really look at scores that often. I mean, they if they see someone shoot like, plus five, then they'll dive deep into their um, their scorecard and see, oh, he made a double, he made a triple, so it's just an easy mistake. Um, but they tend to look at the attitude of players and if their um, like bogey or double bogey would kind of like deteriorate their, uh, their round. So I think being able to be resilient, which is a, which is a big word here, um, is something they look for a lot. Okay, that is quite good advice, you know, to, to know that how is UVA coach like it, yeah. And I believe that during the tournaments, coaches will join the tournaments in their own way. Have you ever talked with any coach or any suggestion that you get from them? I believe during the tournament, coaches will join the tournament in their own way. Uh, I mean, I just, I just know, like, when I was a junior before getting committed, um, there were a lot of coaches following me. I think I had like 10 to 12 coaches at one point, but um, some of them would go out of their way to kind of like persuade me to go to their, um, their college. So, I mean, there, there, there's just a lot of college coaches that would, just show up to random AJGAs if they want a player that that's like that will change their program. Yeah, so that's what I heard that you know that's why is uh, AJGA tournament is quite important because the college coach you know will go and watch it, right? So you you have to do the good performance on that day. Mm -hmm. Uh, so as that you you know you are my good in the golfer so how is like your gpa uh i mean last semester was pretty good i had a three i think three five gpa which is i took four classes so that's um i think that's three a and one b plus so i mean i just had good time management coming in um it, I knew that I needed to stick to my process and like be committed to what I'm doing, which is what I'm here for. I'm, I'm here to get a good academic, um, to get a good, good academics and play some good golf. Um, that's all I'm here to do. Bill said, wish you win US a measure this year. <laughs> uh, I love it. <laughs> Okay, so Josie, I, I would like you to, you know, uh, assume that for what is, uh, you know, AJGA, again, you know, AJGA, that the public, as I listen to you from uh, your processing that to come to play AJGA, and then now you are in US and major, you know, so AJGA is still the, the first, uh, you know, hard way right to making mm -hmm. you to go through to the process and college so I want you to uh, you know summarize and telling us again about AJJ 
that is very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the AJGA is important um, because you can, there's so many things. Um, you can get scouted by colleges easily. Um, you can make new friends. You can play against um, some of the top juniors in the country. So I think having an AJGA in Thailand is um, it's a very good thing for you guys. And it's very fortunate that you guys have that because, I mean, growing up, uh, my parents and I, we had spent a lot of time, a lot of money just trying to gain those stars and play against um, some juniors that were pretty good. So I think uh, I think it's a really good thing that the agency college recruit is hosting an AGGA in Thailand. Well, the, thank you, Jazzy, that you're sharing about your uh, pathway and your experience. So I, we're just having a new uh, audience is come to join. I don't know that did they uh, want to have any question. Could I say any, any that, uh, do you have any question about AJGA as you just come to joining? No, maybe, maybe not so. Well, thank you again. And before we uh, will finish off this webinar tonight, so I, I would like you to say, uh, a word to AR as your dad is the CEO of AR. So what is, uh, you know, AR is supporting you too. Mm -hmm. Oh, you cut out, what did you say? I said, could you say it about AR as your dad is mm -hmm. the, the CEO of AR. This, AR is a support any pathway of your uh, AJGA too. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Um, I think, I mean, since my dad uh is a CEO of Aging College Recruit, he knows many um college coaches. He knows what tournaments you should play in, because mm -hmm. he kind of figured that out through my experience and talking with a lot of other people at those tournaments. So. I think it's a really good idea that you guys are with the agency college recruit if you want to play um, at the highest level um, of amateur golf. And I just think it's very fortunate that you guys have this. So thank you, Josie. So I will leave it this back to your dad to before that we end off this uh, webinar. So could Josh? You see here? Oh, okay. So you have nothing to say because he already know you <laughs> a lot. <laughs> okay, so thank you. Thank you everyone for joining our webinar tonight. And we hope that uh, you get a lot of information tonight. And hopefully that we will see you in next up webinar and see you in AJ. GA Thailand. So thank you again. Bye. Bye, Josie. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. you. Have a good time.
Bye, Kunjosh.